Yo, hey everybody, Joey Mesa here. Uh, right now I'm just testing out this uh, SRAM Force Red Hybrid that I just rebuilt. Um, yeah, about seven miles into my journey commute this morning, and so far this thing's holding up pretty awesome. Uh, quite a bit of build up there on the drivetrain, but no fouled up shifting yet so uh yeah let's just get into what all we did here this is a shifter that's on my commuter bike and uh i haven't ridden it as much it's mainly uh now just more of a poor weather uh snowy rainy day bike um so anyway last time i rode it it was a snowy day and i was noticing that the uh my uh, sram the shifter here it kind of was getting the it, it felt like it was basically in the highest cog and you, you know when you shift it over and sometimes it does that little ghost click so um i'm going to tear this thing apart and um just kind of go through and inspect it and see if see what the actual issue is if it's something with broken within the shifter um i know a lot of the older models had an issue with there's uh piece that I'll show you here in just a bit that had a tendency to break um, on these things so we're going to go through that and see if that's the issue or if it maybe just needs a good good clean up there and reassembly could be just excessive drag in the cables as well so <clears throat> we'll uh, let's go ahead and get this thing off and take a little closer look deep inside of it here all right so what we're going to do first is basically just uh, shift all the way to the small cog there and before we can take that off we're gonna have to disconnect the cable here at the rear derailleur and my little uh, here at the brake caliper there all right so this bike's super grungy so I went ahead and got the uh, blue nitrile gloves on so anyway I've discovered on these um, the SRAM clutch style derailleurs if you Go ahead and lock that thing out of out of out of the way there. It makes it a little easier to uh, work on. So uh, you, these little caps, you can usually I don't know, just squeeze them off. Or I usually just the quickest method is just to cut that thing. Usually will give you a little cleaner cut there. That anyway. Four millimeter hex key and from there that'll just unplug uh, yeah so and we'll go ahead and do the same thing here on the uh, non-drive side with the brake this is a five millimeter but this is just going to vary depending on what kind of brake you have on here um, this particular SRAM lever works with either, you can use a mechanical disc or just your standard rim brake caliper is what it's designed for. So before we take the lever off, we can basically just disconnect it now with the cables both loose. Um, I usually roll up this, the hood there and that little five millimeter hex bolt is what we're going to undo um, you know as you can see the the tape is kind of wrapped around it so we're going to go ahead and uh, i'm just going to un undo the top section of the bar tape here it's always good to use the best quality finishing tape is that you can there usually it comes off pretty easily and doesn't leave a lot of sticky residue there so at this point we can just unwrap our tape we're not going to go too far we're just going to go basically uh, beyond the lever body up and over Got our little jelly pad there. We'll set that aside. And so now we've got room to just go ahead and pull this right on off. So one thing before you take this off, most of the time I'll 
line my levers up just with the straight edge you know on the bottom so um, should be comparable to the other side but you, if you're not 100% sure on that you might check it first before you start taking your lever off um, so what I'm going to do here is we're going to just go ahead and take this thing normally at this point you know it's loose and with this all you can do it either which way you can unwrap this all the way and slide it off but we're kind of saving our going to try to save ourselves a little bit of work here and we'll have to take this piece off anyway so I'm just the bolt's still there that's the piece that it goes into I'm just going to leave this all in place we can pull that off and then from here with our cables loose we can go ahead and just pull this right on off of here there's one ferrule there for the it goes in the brake housing side I'm just going to kind of push that back up on there and just pulling this out to me it feels like there's quite a bit of in this uh, cable so we may end up replacing that but so anyway we got our shifter body off here um, uh, what I'm going to do at this point as well is I'm going to go ahead and pull the hood completely off but I'm going to take it to the back way just because I've got this big cut on here normally you'll just pull it off but I don't want to I don't know just scavenging this bike along I don't want to have to replace this hood so I'm going to try to carefully slide it off that way. In order to disassemble this shifter we're going to need a, there's a few things I like to use. A little something to hold the small bolts and things, small Phillips screwdriver and then uh, maybe a pick, a couple picks, some isopropyl alcohol. Uh, so using 70% isopropyl which is just kind of what I had around the house and usually I like to use a spray bottle but at the shop we'll use 90% or just denatured alcohol but you just pour it a little bit in between there give it a little twist and it'll come right off uh, and we want to go ahead and pull this just so it doesn't fall out and get lost uh, but the little bolt there that secures it to the handlebar clamp there's the little bolt and then there's a little washer with a little lip on it um, so from here we can remove these cables uh, it's pretty straightforward as long as the shifters all the way in the starting position it just will slide out you push it through and you'll see it come out through that bottom hole there um, a lot of folks will get these this larger hole there confused with the cable outlet but that's all it is is just a placement hole for these two there's one on the other side of the shifter body as well it just holds those little nubs in place there and kind of keeps that keeps it from twisting on the shifter there whatnot so anyway yeah that cable will just pull on through um, we're gonna go ahead and replace these cables and housing and then the brake cable just pushes straight through that way um, you know as far as you got four little Phillips screws there and the one in the front edge there is a little shorter than the rest uh, so you may you know make a note or something or just I don't know put it separately but yeah short one in the front the back three are all the same length they're a little longer uh, so once you get uh, get those out you can pull the little plate off and I don't think I've ever you know five years or so that I've had this shifter I've never disassembled it so yeah it's as you can see it's pretty grungy and dirty in there if I would have just cleaned it up it probably would have worked substantially better but you know as we got this apart we found a little issue with it but you know you kinda of see how it works there um, anyway there's this other this little screw here on the other side and that's all that does is kinda of forms a little uh, overhang so that pin that you know or the little rod there that holds everything in place uh, it's kind of a little keeper so once you you don't have to take this one all the way out just give it a few turns just enough to where you can't see it through that hole anymore 
Um, yeah, just back it out just a little bit there, give it a maybe three or four turns, and then from there you can just push that pin out. Uh, so I like to use like one of these 90 degree picks, um, but I think in a pinch I've used like a, I don't know, like a long handle three millimeter Allen wrench or hex key or whatever. You can you just need something you can kind of bend in there and then push on the end of that pin. So it takes a little bit of, a little bit of uh, I don't know, time sometimes to find the, the end of it there and kind of figure out where you're trying to push on but it's I don't know it's not too difficult it's all free in there so once you can get to the push the end of it you can see there it's we've got it uh, poked out enough to get our needle nose pliers onto it all right so all my needle nose grew legs and walked away so I found a set here but basically we're gonna just grab the end of that little pin and there we could pull it right on out there's no, you can stick it in either which way. It's the same on both ends, so. Okay, so from there, we can go ahead and pull this, pull our shift mechanism out of here. Um, so there's a, this spring here that preloads this, the red piece here where the cable slips into, so we'll go ahead and take that out first. Uh, it is spring-loaded right there. From here, we can take this piece out. And then we get our shifter body here. This one little paw with the return spring there. Uh, so, yeah, you can see basically where that sits. That's where the, the pin, if we have everything out of here, it basically just sticks in like so and it only goes so far and that little screw there is what holds it in so um, you know it's kind of hard to see in there I've you know had these things out before but really just taking your little pick there and pushing that thing through basically you can see where it's sticking through once you get it that far then you can just grab it with your needle nose and we should pull it through the rest of the way so hopefully that makes sense these shifters are really they're pretty easy to rebuild um, I'd say probably easier than campy shifters um, but yeah so anyway yeah I think this I think our main issue here is that this thing is just really dirty I think because typically what you'll see, I'm going to clean this up and then I'll show you on a, on a different one, but um, on the old versions, this was, these were basically steel. This one's a thicker, it looks like a thicker aluminum, this kind of this H structure here. They would always crack right in this area and then basically this, the lever wouldn't maintain its correct position, so this, the little paw here became ineffective so um, the only thing that is a little concerning this there seems to be a lot of play on this paw uh, do have a little something I might try though okay so that's the original the force one but I have this one that came out of a uh, red I think it may have been a 10 speed even, but it was a yaw version. But just holding those up together, they look, everything looks identical as far as I can tell. But this piece here is definitely doesn't have near the amount of play that this one has. See that excessive play there compared to this one, which has very little. So. I think what I'm going to actually do is I'm not even worried about cleaning that up. I'm going to clean the rest up and see if I can. Uh, I'm just going to stick this one in there, see how she goes. So we got this thing all cleaned up here, and just I don't know a couple of points of interest that are easy to see while we got this apart. 
So you got this, you can see where it says break in. So that's your, that's a two and a half millimeter. Yeah, so you, by uh, adjusting this either in or out, you can adjust, that's how you adjust your lever as far as how far out you want it or in, as far as your starting point. Uh, I'm not gonna mess that too much because I think I liked it where it was. And then as well, you've got on the, uh, the little shift lever here, you've got your, it says reach. And basically this is just a little, you can see as you turn that, I think there's three, three or four different positions that I'll get that dialed in once I get it all installed there. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna use some of this, some parts, I'm gonna use some of this. This is the uh, rock and roll super web grease, which is basically a, looks like a lithium grease, but it's, they claim it's a, like a PTFE grease. So I'll put just a little bit of this on our little rod here this out of the way and we'll start just by I'm just gonna stick that in just to that far right there just so we got a little place to start there um, so we got our little ratchet ring I guess you could call this you got a little little coil spring there and then you've got your actual teeth on the that piece that hole there is where the cable goes in and then as you ratchet this up you know with each click it basically turns that way so um, you know and you can see that little black line that's where the cable runs and this is one area where uh, you know, you don't hear about it a lot, but where SRAM is actually, I think, a little ahead of Shimano, because these definitely don't tend to eat the cables up like the Shimano ones. I, I think Shimano has a tighter bend radius on this, so it, it just, over time, as that thing, you know, moves back and forth from the shifts, it just, it puts, it just fatigues that cable, and then the the little strands will start to fray in that area and then they get caught up and pieces break off and it's a could be frustrating so all right so i'm going to put just a little just a little grease on this thing as well so let's put a little bit on this back side here and so this that little hook piece there is going to rest right up on that piece so the tricky part is you got to kind of hold this little spring back to get that in there so I'll use my little pick here So yeah, you can see that little, the little shelf there. You kind of want to aim for having the the uh, cable access hole facing outwards there. So I've got it in the first, maybe not quite there. But there we go. Got my. So I'm starting to push this thing through. We don't need to go that far. We got it just, I got it just butted up to the end of that. So um, there we go. So I'm gonna click that and hold it in that position for now. And then we can put our, I'm just gonna put a little grease on these two, the end pieces that move that way. So we got this spring that needs to rest. This is probably the hardest piece to get in, but basically if you just kinda wiggle it in there, press straight down on it, and then you gotta make sure this, you don't want that to slip back like that, you want it to stay upwards like this in that position. All right, let's see if we can get this in there. 
we're kind of having to work around this little nub here so I might actually I don't know if this will make it easier but I'm gonna push that up that way maybe we can make it a little easier to work around that Push our pin all the way in as far as it'll go. That looks pretty good. Oh, here's my first error. I didn't get that. See, I didn't get that piece in there. So I'll push her back out. go all the way back. I'm just going to go out just far enough to get this piece back out. Just want to kind of be careful not to damage anything. Push that back up there because I think it made it easier to get the this in. There we go. I think we got it this time. Push that guy in. As far as it'll go, there we go. All right, I think it's functional. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use some of my green finish line. I usually like the foamy kind, but this stuff's about, I don't even know, 15 years old maybe, so hopefully it's still good. Just work that in a little. So, set these things aside and wipe off a little bit of that excess oil. Go ahead and put our little cover back on. Got our, I'll start with the, the short screw. One that was up here. Usually something like this, a plate or something that's got multiple screws. You don't want to get any of them tight right off the bat if you uh, basically just get them all started. Maybe 75-80% of the way in and then you can snug them down after that. Sometimes it'll happen if you snug one down it kind of offsets everything and then it's difficult to get the other one started. And so you can see on the uh, shift lever that gap that's between there so that's where we can make our little adjustment with the shifter lever reach there. These snug down. I snug down my other screw now to hold that pin in. And you can see as I some snugging that one down, you can see it protrude 
just gets just goes past the pin. It doesn't rest against it. It just holds it in place there, so it doesn't back its way out. <clears throat> okay, so let's just imagine with that brake lever pushing up against there. Got our 2.5 millimeter hex there, and then if I I think that one looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm okay with that. All right, let's go ahead and uh, so go ahead and put our hood back on. All right, so we just want to get a little get this up in the the hood here. work it around a little bit and, you know normally you'll go in like this way especially if it's on the bike but again I didn't want to risk ripping this thing any further so we're just gonna go go up and over the back way there we go Go ahead and roll this back up. That'll take a bit to dry, but that alcohol will evaporate and won't slip around. We're gonna go ahead and put our little handlebar clamp screw back in. So you got this little plate here. It's got that little tab. The tab's gonna go on the bottom. Like so. Whoop. So, tab goes on the bottom, and you get your bolt. I put a little grease on this thing just because sometimes if that's too dry, like on the flange as well, it'll has a tendency to turn that no turn washer thing. Okay, so now we're ready to. Put this thing back on the bike and put our cables in it. All right. So before I put put that back on, I'm gonna replace these two pieces of cable housing and put some new new shift and brake cables. In this. All right. So I'm just gonna both these housings were good length so I'm just gonna match them up Alright, so I'll go ahead and put this cable in the shifter here. I don't know how easy that is to see, but into this second hole here is all the way up in there and the brake cable you just stick it brake cable you just stick it straight through the hole there and it's gonna come right out through there we'll go ahead and put this back on the bike as it's sitting here all right. usually all I like to do is just I'll set it a little lower but you see the you see the screw 
side of there. Just kind of got to guide it in there. Okay. So I'm do is just take that brake cable and run that in. I'm not going to snug this all the way down yet, but get it towards kind of held in place a little better. Okay. So now we've got our first chunk of housing here. And we're going to put one ferrule on it. And then the other side just goes straight over the cable. Got my little bit of slick honey. Let's put a little bit on this inner wire right through there. Make sure we'll get all the dust and debris off the house, the inner wire. So you can go either in this, there's two grooves here, the outer one and then the inside one. I'm going to put it in this outer one. I prefer that one. But it's up totally up to you. So, before we hook the cable up, I'm going to rotate that down like so, get it out of the way. Uh, the cable is going to come right through there, like so, over that little nub there, and down under this washer making sure my barrel adjuster is all the way in so I'll probably need to back that out just a little to get the cable tension set up just right I'm cinch that down unlock the derailleur and we'll give it a test run here Oh. Go ahead and thread this back down. Got a little slack in the cable, so I'm just gonna go back and start from scratch. Pull the slack out, cinch it back down. We'll give it another try here. Looking better. Right. We'll probably fine tune it just a hair more once we get the cable tape down on the bars because that usually changes things just a little bit. 
ahead and hook up the brake cable now. All right, so get this started through here. It's usually pretty easy. So I've got it going now. It's got a full run of length of uh, the brake cable there. I'm going to get this thing get a nice film of slick honey. Cable coming out through there. And had this little Teflon tube piece that's going to fit through there. Go ahead and slide that on. It's right there now. So slip that up through there. And I had this little rubber piece here I had that slit over to kind of what happened is I would ride and water could get down in here and then when it's sub freezing it would freeze down there below the bottom bracket and get the brakes would lock up so that piece helped somewhat with that issue all right so Got the cheap electrical tape. This stuff's good for doing the taping for under the bars. Get this kind of position where we want it. Some people will do the whole thing. I usually just do a couple, couple spots here. All right, so. These are the only scissors I could find. Little dinky ones for now. How's our apartment's kind of in a state of disarray because we're moving. And which yeah. Moving, getting a place with a garage now at least, so hopefully here before too long I'll be able to get back into some fabrication projects and whatnot. Uh, there's my little gel pad thing. Kind of set that back in place. All right, so we're gonna get our figure eight tape pattern going here and. Getting this bike ready for tomorrow because it looks like it's starting to snow now, so I'm definitely going to be riding this bike tomorrow to work. Don't worry about doing too great of a tape job, I'm probably replacing this tape pretty, probably pretty soon. Looks just about right. Just gonna use the cheap tape for now. Cause I don't know where my other 3M electrical tape is at. One more. Hood back. Oh, make sure this thing is right where I want it. identical to the other one from the side view so make sure we're straight here go ahead and cinch this 
cinch this down. And pull our hood back. We're good to go. Give it one last test real quick. Definitely feels 20 times smoother, lighter action, just you know, mainly from that new cable. Alright, we'll trim off the little excess and put some caps on and we're good to go. So yeah, it's going to do it uh, for this particular video. Um, hopefully you Hopefully the video was insightful, helpful if you're trying to rebuild one of these. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.